Greetings all you maniacs from Minds from Crimes. Welcome back to another Warframe Weapon Showcase. Today we are going to be taking a look at the Prisma Twin Gremlins because someone said that these things aren't very good anymore. How? <laughs> Actually how? These things are fantastic. So, like all the Prisma weapons, you have to get these things from Baro. I know, sad times, because fucking Baro is here. But, whatever. So, this is the first build. I will showcase multiple builds. This is a four forma build. Yes, this thing is pretty forma intensive. But, if I remember right, it either comes with a dash polarity or a V polarity. Um, either case, primed mods, punch through, fire rate, multi-shot, the standard stuff. I used to have a ribbon for this. Because this thing has a high as fuck ribbons this position. So the ribbons are going to be really freaking strong. So these things are, well, essentially auto pistols that are nail guns, basically. They have a decent rate of fire and their reload speed is lightning fast. These things mostly deal puncture and slash damage. So they're going to destroy. Anyway. So as you saw there, normal corrosive build. If you have a ribbon with heat, that's even better. So you can do corrosive and heat, but... When did these things get bad again? These things have always, always been good. Always been reliable. And they send enemies flying, literally. And it's great. And that reload speed, though. Now... Yes, they are projectile based and the projectiles don't move incredibly fast, but there's ways around that, i.e. modding for it or playing Zephyr, um, so there are definite ways around that. Also, you can put hydraulic crosshairs on this to get even more critical chance if you want. Um, the ribbons are very, very powerful and I don't know how expensive an unrolled ribbon would be, so yeah. So there's that. There's the Crosa build. Absolutely fantastic. Works a treat. Um, you could say that they're a little ammo inefficient, but all you need to do is put another form of here, open up this, and then you can put on like ammo mutation, and then you're fine. Uh, but whatever. Anyway, this is the second build. Wait, gas damage. Oh, this is old. This is an old build. Um, this is anti-infested pretty much nowadays. But uh, yeah, let's just do viral. Now... Here's the thing with this weapon, though. Because it doesn't always slash, you might be thinking, Viral isn't going to be very good. Let me say this. Viral damage doesn't give a fuck what physical type is going on. It doesn't care. So, yeah. Viral status increases health damage taken up to 325%. So, it doesn't require slash at all. It could be impact, puncture, it doesn't matter. I think it even affects elemental. I'm not sure, but yeah. And because this thing has a relatively decent status chance and the rate of fire this thing pushes out, and well with its raw damage and crit stats, it's very solid. Of course, it doesn't have the highest critical chance or the highest critical multiplier. But that's what ribbons are for. And honestly, it's sort of a moot point because you can see just how devastating these things are. Why does it spawn multiple enemies inside of each other? What the fuck? But yeah. You also might be thinking, wait a minute, why is Seeker not one not fully maxed? I would have to put another form in. I don't really want to do that right now because of my form is situation. Anyway. So, what does it look like when I actually give this thing like a Warframe buff? I have not done this in a while, but we are going to be dragging out Harrow. Our old pal Harrow. Ah, I have not played this frame in so freaking long, but he's still great. He needs some help uh, because he can't really survive. Oh, there's his, there's his four. Um, I don't count that. Anyway. 
Also, arcane velocity, uh, other pistol arcanes. Of course, it will apply. To, it will apply to these. I mean, I don't need to tell you that. That's that's how that works. Anyway, let's get my crit buffs to make these things go crazy with red crits. That's enough. When you get about two thousand damage, you are practically going to be red critting. So yeah. And I think these things are actually relatively easy to aim. The projectiles at close range move fast enough to where it's not really a problem. But of course you can see that Harrow just makes this thing go crazy. Now here's the thing with Harrow's buffs. They seem great on paper, but honestly, his crits, they don't do as much damage as you would think. However, you can see there that it works absolutely fantastically and then with higher fire rate yeah these things turn into absolute bullet hoses anyway another frame that you could use to boost this thing is someone like rhino that can actually boost its damage directly so let's show that i really don't like rhino he's slow cumbersome and doesn't work very well in most situations i don't know why i press two but yeah of course a buffer rhino is going to make this thing stronger. Um, I'd show Mirage, but I would have to go to the other Simulacrum, and I don't, and that would take a while, and I'd rather not. So yeah, there's that. Anyway, the last test is going to be against normal level enemies. I'm not going to be playing Rhino for it. I'm going to be playing. Well, it doesn't even really matter what I play for the normal tests. But anyway. Oh, also. If you want to have some real fun, you could play Banshee and just, um, this over and over again. Or two, but I'm not going to do that because that skews the shit out of everything. Uh, Garuda will make these things slash out of just all the fucking time. So anyway, I'm just going to just play Baruch. Why not? And I'm going to spawn in normal level peasants to shoot. So it's going to be my normal lineup. I'm going to turn on invincibility just because I'm not going to be using any of Baruch's abilities. Um, I'm not going to be putting any enemies to sleep. I'm not going to be doing anything like that. So I'm just going to spawn in some enemies in here. Where the hell's the Nox? Is it the governors? Because realistically, you're not going to be fighting a, a horde of heavy gunners all the damn time. Most of the time, it's, it's just going to be, you know, regular peasants. Anyway. This is the Krosa build. I'll do the exact same with the um, Viral build. Now, different enemies take, diff take different lengths to kill. The Scorpions um, die the fastest, of course, because they have the less armor. I'm not actually super well equipped to take on Noxes because even though Corrosive does good against Alloy Armor, it's not, you know, very, very potent against Alloy Armor. Against Ferret Armor, you can see that it just absolutely decimates. Do I think these things are better than the Axamati Prime? Uh, it's very close. It's very close. But yeah, because pistol ammo is so plentiful, you probably won't run out of ammo, but ammo mutation is definitely a thing you can do. So yeah, there's that. You see there, I nearly ran out of ammo. That's fine. That's completely fine. Here's the thing with pistols, though. <clears throat> You're not going to be using pistols all the time. Well... I, I say that speaking for everyone. Me personally, I don't really use pistols all that much. I still build them because they're nice to have as a secondary. That's their job. Their job is to be a backup. See, I'm doing way more damage to Nox now. Because, yeah, he does not like getting hit in the face with Viral. I think his face kind of just counts as cloned flesh. I think that's what's going on. Because every single time I go against a Nox and I'm using Corrosive, it takes forever. But if I'm using Viral, they die super fast. 
could also be the fact that Viral is just insane nowadays. So yeah. The Prisma Twin Gremlins. These things don't care. They are absolutely freaking amazing. They will work very, very well even at high levels. Um, they will destroy pretty much everything. And of course, like any any weapon, every single thing on the star chart is going to get decimated. It does not fucking matter. So, when it comes to modding these things, if you have a ribbon, I'd say roll for heat just so you have it so you could kill things faster. Uh, critical chance and critical damage, they're pretty well covered by Prime Target Cracker and Prime Pistol Gambit, but it doesn't mean that you can't have even more and get this to over 100% because I'm pretty sure you can with a ribbon disposition of 4 out of 5. It's amazing to me that these things have such a high ribbon disposition. Fast reload speed, good rate of fire, good power, and they're goddamn automatic nail guns. They're, they're awesome. Um, this build right here, the viral build, is going to d destroy any faction pretty much. Uh, infested? Not really. Infested don't really care about viral damage too, too much. Um, nor do they really care about puncture, but they don't like slash, gas, and heat, and some don't like corrosive and blast, so there's that. Uh, if you're going to be going strictly against Grenier, uh, Corrosive might work the best, although you could say Viral is going to work better. Viral will also work very well against Corpus. Although, against Corpus, if you can manage it, I would recommend you do Radiation and Toxin. Why that combo? That's weird, right? Here's the thing. Toxin bypasses shields. Okay. Radiation does more damage against their units with alloy armor. They do exist. They're rare, but they do exist. And they're robotics. And the toxin kind of helps that too. Even though robots don't care about getting hit with toxin because they're robots. Anyway. That's just my two cents on it. Um, so if you can, you can put a exclusive adapter here. Put another forma. And then you could put an aiming mutation or prime day mutation you could also put another form of here and then put on lethal momentum for more projectile speed. Or you can play uh, Zephyr with the jet stream augment. So this will give you more uh, projectile speed. So without it, they fly that fast with it. Yeah, that's that's really fast. And of course, you could have a stronger Zephyr than mine and you will have projectiles that move really fast. So my Zephyr only has 145% power strength, but if you crank this to like 300 something, these things will basically turn hit scan. It will be ridiculous. Um, I'll do a video on Zephyr eventually. She is absolutely fucking fantastic, and I don't know why I don't see her very often. She's freaking great. Anyway, so that's the Prisma Twin Gremlins. These pistols are fantastic. Are they the best dual pistols in the game? No. Are they on par with a lot of them? Yeah, because a lot of dual pistols are pretty freaking similar. They Most of them have a high rate of fire, decent crit stats, and decent status stats. So, there's that. Now, this thing will be destroyed by the Kuva Twin Stubbas, but they're the Kuva Twin Stubbas. That's like the upper echelon of twin pistols. Um... I do reckon that these things might be slightly stronger than the Axomati Prime, but I have to test that. Anyway, that's just my two cents on everything. So for people that kind of either forgot about these weapons, never tried them, or think that they have been sort of outdated, no. <laughs> no, they haven't. They still staple enemies to walls and don't give a shit. So thank you guys so much for watching, and remember, Entropy. We trust.